Another morning. Looks Beautiful like, uh, day. Better day today, huh? Yeah. So, what are you expecting today? Hopefully a good turnout. Pretty good. We got a couple guys here today, no right now. To. Yeah. We're a little early. It's good. No rain today. No rain. A little bit. We got here at like 9:30, and there was, was no one else. You guys have been here since 9:30. How's it going? I was like just dropping off my wood. Good. I looked out and I watched two cars pulling and I'm like, oh, that's Sam. Camera shot. <laughs> then that looks like Bonnie's car. All right. Getting all the gear together. <laughs> Today I'm running Banshee Shellback plate carrier. Uh, it's got a kangaroo Mags. pouch on the front of it, two, and then I got a triple mag pouch, five mags, 150 rounds each. So <laughs> it usually is suffice. And then multitude of guns. I don't know what I'm running. Like a one nine army there. <laughs> oh yeah. So this is VFC's newest HK416 A5. Updated stock. I put the EPS PTS grip on there. Is that what that's called? Or PTS EP EPG EPG. Yeah. GMP D ball. It's got IR and visible laser. And then I can't remember the name of this site, but it's awesome. <laughs> that's all that counts, right? Yeah. This site actually. It turns out it's motion. It's all motion sense, so you don't gotta screw with it at all. It turns on when you're moving. Yeah. Yep. You should try to R-hop it for him. So this is uh, WMIA 2019. Moss right. Family Field, Ravana, Michigan. If you uh live on the west side of the state come check it out look up samuel johnson on facebook he runs this field um we've been playing out here a couple years now all it's right pretty legit i think playable field is 20 acres wow 25 So that's here. your lake, huh? Yeah, we come here pretty much any time there's a game, so. No, <coughs> people come from miles around, or? Oh, yeah. Is it, is it? I've there's... seen people drive three hours to come play here. Well. Turnouts. Very. It's airsoft. Turnouts vary. We've had 30, 40 players here. We've had 10 players here. It's mm -hmm. a good day no matter what, though. He comes up with game styles for as many people show up. Right. Sam Johnson, he actually runs the field, and then right. Nathan, Nathan is the owner of the property. Ah. So that's how that is. So how did, how did it all start here then? Well, this is actually a change for us. Um, for West Michigan Airsoft, when it started, it was actually a, a outdoor like experience field uh, in... Uh, what was it? Sternberg Field. Sternberg yeah, Muskegon. just outside of Muskegon, where the guy had a racetrack because you could do RC car stuff. He also had uh, grew Christmas trees in a portion of his land, but he had the rest of this thing, and he was doing air, letting us rent it out for airsoft. And uh, from there, we switched over and got an actual location in Muskegon called NIMS, which was a former elementary school. Uh, it just shut down and the school system was just paying taxes on it and just letting it sit there and kind of rot and it was like Do you think we could try to do something with it? So and We were playing out of there for quite a while and then Nathan's family offered Saying hey, we have this land out here. We only pretty much use it during the fall and winter for hunting If you guys want to hang out here and uh, Have our son make it easier for him to play airsoft go right ahead. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been that way for a few years now. So, and you get people from all around? Yeah, no, I've had people from out of state. 
Wow. Uh, most of the time when it's out of state, it's it's uh, people you know visiting other family members, and they're like they're airsoft players, and they just happen to apparently brought their stuff. So yeah, yeah. I've had guys from Illinois and Ohio show up. Uh, guys from across the state, all the way in Detroit, so they're driving four hours just to come over and hang out. You know? Wow. That's so, good. luckily we have a, a reputation about ourselves that we bring standard rec play, and I like to bring scenario-based gameplay. You know, not just not just force on force, but actually doing... I'll, I'll do a five-man squad versus everybody for a specific scenario. A big popular one right now is our, is our down pilot scenario. I told him he's getting a, a well more range than he was. Yeah, that's insane. And now mine's plooping, popping. Oh, there you go. See? So this is called a chronograph. Yeah. It measures the velocity of the BBs coming out of the barrel. What weight are you using? Threes. Uh, push the magical button. <laughs> that's I had to figure it, out, figure it out last time. I was like, what? Registering anything. Nothing? Nothing. There we go. Again. 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 So you're floating between 1.35 and 1.4. Cool. Yeah. Is there a legal? Yeah. Limit? So the reason that we chronograph is because we need to measure how uh, much joule energy impact that the BB has on you because. Even though all the ammunition is six millimeter, it can vary on the actual density of okay. the of the actual round, changing the weight. So, uh, <laughs> bad the best way to describe it is uh, you swing a foam baseball bat at someone at the same speed as a steel one. <laughs> gonna have problems. Yeah. Yeah. So what we do is we have actually dual regulations that create engagement limits. So, for example, for him, he's shooting 1.35, 1.4. He's got a 20-foot engagement where, at minimum, they need to be 20 foot away. Right. But he can still shoot full auto. That's based on our field. That's pretty much the standard in terms of outdoor fields in America. It does vary, actually, country to country. Um, but if, he, if they encroach upon his 20-foot engagement, he either needs to move or he needs to change to a sidearm that actually allows him to be arm's length distance away. Uh, I want to say typically most players who are shooting that don't run into that issue because usually they're not letting people get behind them but I usually play how I practice when it comes to real steel target shooting whereas if somebody got that close to me I'm gonna take the hit because I should that's irresponsible on me for allow somebody to get around, get around me. It's a good training tool airsoft is that kind of stuff. Pistol. Most of the airsoft pistols these days uh, are all blowback, and most of them are still full metal. If not, they replicate their counterpart in real steel. So, for example, airsoft Glocks do have a polymer lower, a metal upper, and uh, recently they came out with the licensing official through Glock, so now they have all the real steel trades as well. You can almost not tell one for one what's the difference between the two. And in the airsoft community, because the majority of it is uh, gun advocates, you know, Second Amendment, America, and all that good stuff, we promote out of public view, responsible gun ownership, the four major rules of owning weapons and operating them in the public. Uh, yeah. it, we it, it is com and even in the airsoft community is completely irresponsible for anybody who owns these things especially younger kids because you know at this field you can have a 12 year old play as long right. as the parent has consent on the forms for the waivers uh, completely irresponsible for that to be out in the public especially in like an urban setting right. in the backyard why you don't need to do that you don't need to be shooting at each other like that you don't need to be bringing that stuff to school no absolutely not so, Airsofters thoroughly vet its own community and don't be doing dumb stuff, be responsible, because you just ruin it for the rest of us. Uh, just the major, the main safety rules, need full seal eye protection, and I also ask that you have a dead rag. Does anybody not have a dead rag? So just simple basic layout for the field, as you can see, straight down this direction, all open field, that's out of play, go towards the woods. 
this direction, obviously, open field out of play. Mm -hmm. In this direction, because this field is basically just a glorified rectangle. There is a trail path for vehicles to pass by so that these neighbors can get to their land all the way across. Mm -hmm. And then far off on this side, uh, there's an electrified fence with the tags on it. So you'll know it when you touch it. Look out for those tags. I haven't had an incident yet. I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> it's not I, was, I thought Dane was yeah, going to really do it last week. All right, everybody's been chronoed. Everybody understands their engagement limits. Is there any questions on the engagement limits, rules, regulations, anything like that? All right, I think everybody here knows pretty basic airsoft rules. You know, no blind firing, calling your hits. Uh, if there is a ricochet off a tree, it doesn't count. Don't worry about that. Gun hits don't count. Uh, if anybody was confused about it, pistols in holsters are gear, not guns. So make that mistake. Uh, we'll start off the day just like we always do with a simple game of team deathmatch. Uh, I have a cone over here on this portion of the field and then I have one straight back. Uh, let's see, Vanity, sure. I'm going to have you hang out with these two. Sure. And now one, three. Colin, where you at? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah. Okay. I'll have him hanging out with you guys. Torin, I'll have you hanging out over here. And then I'll give you guys first pick. You want uh, this starting location for Cone or the farther one? Where was the farther one? Uh, the oh, the farther one, the if you remember the field, that there's a car the on the farther field. One. And that there's a dish. Yep. That direction. All right. Just to the right of it. Okay. Okay. You want that one? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, since it's 4v4, does everybody want tape or no? It is 4v4. Yeah. It always helps. I can recognize these guys. They, have the same name. they all have multi cam and black. Yeah, I can know these guys. Yeah, shoot everybody. It's more okay. <laughs> Run in a squad and we won't have to be easy enough. Exactly. Uh, we'll we're do all shooting the same direction. Yep, we'll do a 15 man match, a team death match, unlimited lives. Just go back. Uh, when you get hit, raise your hand, call hit, pull dead rag, head back to the cone, touch, and head back out. All right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you guys head out right now. Action snipers because of their you know restricted ammo based on the design of the magazine and such right. are allowed to go further than any uh, standard rifle that can do semi-auto. Right. So if you max out your weapon's performance, you are reaching out and touching someone a lot easier than anybody else. Right. You can also use heavier ammo, which means your uh, shots are more precise because the elements aren't affecting them. Um, so you can utilize pretty much every weapon platform in an outdoor setting, even in a recreational field. And that's typically why I like to keep our rule sets as generic as possible in the sense of limitations. I don't have specific regulations on medic rules. I don't have specific regulations on any kind of radio frequencies or anything like that. It's purely safety and uh, just sportsman, uh, sportsmanship regulations, right. calling hits. Uh, there's definitely a back and forth conversation on what's considered the bang rule and how to go about that. That, right. is, a, that is its own can of worms. <laughs> That's for sure. I had to use that last week too. But I like to keep it open because there's the recreational guy who doesn't need a high intense regulated event. And then there's the Milsim guy, yeah. who's trying to actually form a team with full Army Rangers gear right. and actual squad structure and tactics. There they go. It makes for great TV, if only it wasn't just a minute left of gameplay. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Game over! Head back to staging. Good job, guys. Successful first round. Success. Yeah, how many mags you go through? Five. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Success. Christ on that double trigger. <laughs> <laughs> There's a second there. Sound. That was double trigger the whole time. But you still, you still left it at the same jewel rating, right? Yeah.
Then yeah. you can't adjust that. Well, no, I mean, the ability for that weapon to fire that fast and not have a jam at that low, you know what I mean? Versus the spring tension. Oh, yeah. Sometimes Short you have. It, yeah, sometimes you have issues. But, wow. Wow. I was hoping you guys weren't going to shoot us before we're on the side here. The and then we, we, right when we saw it, the guy heard, peel back, I'm like, we just went back that way, and then I heard, I heard a, just a solid ping yeah, right off the side of your gun. Three times that game. Yeah. That, you were stuck behind that tree, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was here. Okay. I was this last time, defending it, though. This last time I died, Let's head up. I was going, I was by Torian, and then I, I heard a tink. I'm like, well, that was close to me, but it couldn't have been my gun. My gun was up here, and then I'm like, what's down on my lower half? That could make a tink. I'm like, oh. Mags out, safety's on, stay safe. I'm <laughs> in. <laughs> the next gameplay we're going to do is domination. Uh, I have three locations out there with bungee cords wrapped around some trees. On the ground is an actual dowel that is taped both yellow and blue. All it takes is for your team, and I'm going to tape you guys off. One will be blue. You guys will be blue. They'll be yellow. Uh, is you put the dowel in the bungee. Whichever color is facing up is the one that owns that location. After uh, after 20 minutes, best two out of the three will be the one for that round, and then we'll do two round two out of three wins rounds wise. Okay. Any questions? And then it'll still be the same structure, like with the team deathmatch in terms of getting hit, calling it, heading back to respawn cone, jump right back in. Both teams, one's going to start here. Four Odin times. Innovations, best Those speed loader around. If you don't have one, get one. All, the, all three locations <laughs> are on <laughs> that side of the field. What happened? You get whacked? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to go see if I can return the favor. Right. So what do you love about the game? Uh, oh, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. It's good exercise. It's good, good way to be outdoors. Yeah. Good. So you go whack too, huh? What's up? You go whack? I got whacked. <laughs> From behind. Oh. So what do you like about this game? It's calm, quiet, but fast paced at the same time. Gets yeah. your blood moving. Gets you excited, gets you in the game. Gets the adrenaline going. How long have you been involved in this sort of stuff? 2010, so apparently nine years. All right. It kind of goes by really quick. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. never imagined when I started playing that I'd actually be running an organization that I was just participating in. Right. Yeah, because I'm not the original creator of this group. Right. Uh, that would be a team called Damage Inc., and it was primarily run by a man named Frank Munster. Okay. Yeah, and he his wife got a job opportunity where they had to move out of state and he handed over the reins to me and slowly but surely I've been building it up and people have been liking my results so that's yeah, good uh, well our minimum age is 12 with some very very minor exceptions and it's typically your parents are there playing with you um, but in terms of yeah 12 year olds that are playing Call of Duty and they want they saw Airsoft on YouTube and they come out and try to play who, and they probably all they ever did was rent from an indoor field right. uh, to the 40 year old uh, desert storm vet who right. shows up there's a there's a, a former marine that shows up here and he got himself uh, a KW, kwa lm4 which is a gas blowback m4 right so he wanted as realistic as he could get where the mags are heavy they're full metal right yeah, yeah. they only carry 30 rounds 
and it blows back every single shot. Wow. He wanted to kind of recreate his yeah. experience, and yeah. and he has a very minimalistic setup, like right. they had back then. You yeah, know? yeah, they didn't have IR flashes. Right. They didn't have up these like high intense optics. optical zoom yeah. optics. You know, yeah. it's a very basic M4 with a red dot, yeah. and a grip. <laughs> I need. like it. Yeah, yeah, that's all you need. So, yeah. yeah. Head back to staging. I would definitely say yellow had that one. Yeah, because they had this one. They for sure had this one. Blue did still maintain this position, which is good on them. You know, and they held it. But yeah, you gotta move when you get the opportunity. And they had one. Yeah. They really should have called it and pushed out. The last thing you need is to be stuck at your yeah. spawn. You know. Sorry, buddy. I didn't want to. I didn't want. I wasn't trying to ignore you, but there was a guy like no, I 15 know, I feet I, I'm from like, me. He's either trying to be quiet or he's dead. So I just like I'll stop calling. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, team killed you. Yeah. Sorry. I was way on the outside. We need armbands. Otherwise, we're gonna team kill each other. Well, <laughs> he was running. I didn't see him. He was running this way. I know. I, I didn't realize I was so close to their spawn. I, know, I thought you were over there. And. uh I was moving in on their point. There was a lot of times where they, we, were, we had both, right? We had both. I know okay. we, I got that one, and I checked that one right before after I spawned, and we still had it. Um, when we were when we were like hitting them over here, I was looking at it. It, it. didn't occur to me that we didn't have that point, and I'm like, oh, there were like three times we went and got it. Yeah. I tried to come back up around there. I was sneaking around slowly. Yeah, I was heading your way. Then I didn't realize the game was about over. This way would have been all right, but we would we basically the, spawn. Like we would shoot yeah. them, and then they'd be at our back. The spawn, the spawns were not good. Exactly. Want guns that go faster. People are gonna want guns that want to go far, fly farther, fly straighter, and that's kind of what so we're working on. Developing like a new type of plastic. We've done it with our 40 yeah. millimeter stuff, so we know yeah. the plastic that we're using.